Now let me briefly explain about this sewing machine. It's a Brother GS2700. It's a basic model. The next model is GS3700 and there are higher models too. The 27 stands for the number of decorative stitches here. This is a portable machine and we kept anywhere while sewing. Though it's portable, it is sturdy and stable and it's very easy to set up and start sewing. Now if you see here, there are four dials. This is the pattern selection dial. This is the tension dial. Now this selection depends on the thread and fabric that you use. You would need to chain this to get smooth stitches. This is the stitch width dial. This is to select the width of the stitch when using any of the decorative stitches. This is the stitch length dial. This is used to increase or decrease the stitch length. I'll explain this later when we start sewing. So let me first show you how to wind the bobbin and then thread the machine. Now to wind the bobbin, put the thread in the spool pin. Now take it around this. Bring it to the front. Use the right bobbin meant for this machine. Put the thread to this hole from inside and pull it out. Put the bobbin in the bobbin winder shaft. Slide it to the right. Now turn the bobbin until the spring on the shaft slides into the notch in the bobbin. You can hear that sound. Now you can start winding the bobbin. Now switch on the machine. Lift the presser foot. Press the foot pedal with your feet to start the machine. Now we'll show how to insert the bobbin. Before inserting the bobbin, lift the presser foot. The bobbin goes inside here. So open this cover. To open this, just slide it towards you. Now insert the bobbin. Here. Let the loose end of the thread be towards you. Now take the thread inside this groove. There is a guide here, arrow mark, which shows you how to do it. And take it around here. And there is a blade at this point which will cut the excess thread. Now close this. To close you just need to slide it in. Now let me show the threading of the upper thread. Before threading, first raise the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel and raise the needle. This is the hand wheel. Turn the hand wheel towards you to raise or lower the needle. Now put the spool into the spool pin. Step 1 is to put the thread in here. You can see a spring here. Put it from under. And it comes down. Bring the thread down and take it up again. Go around this. Bring it down again. There are numbering and arrow marks to help you with the threading on the machine. Now take it behind this thread guide. Put the footer down. This machine comes with a built-in needle threader. This is the needle threader lever. Now put the thread under the guide in the needle threader lever. Pull the lever down and turn it. Now bring the thread in front of the needle place it in front of the needle and you're taking thread under this hook and slowly release the thread and take the lever up now the thread has passed through the eye of the needle to the other side and a loop is formed pull the loop and your needle is threaded now raise the presser foot put the thread below the footer and take it back now in this machine you don't need to get the lower thread up you can just start sewing these accessories come with the machine this is the foot controller 
This is the zigzag foot which we normally use for straight stitches and the decorative stitches. This is the zipper foot which we'll be using for attaching zippers and also for making cord piping. This is the buttonhole foot. This is the button sewing foot. Machine comes with two bobbins. This is the darning plate. And this is the oval screwdriver which is used to remove the needle and to remove the screws. Now there are plenty of other accessories which are optional. These are the two other accessories that I bought. This is a pico foot which is used to make pico and this is a gathering foot. In this video I am not going to, into the details of using different foots. I will just explain briefly. But in one of our upcoming videos I will show using different foots. Now we will show you how to chain the presser foot. First switch off the machine. Raise the presser foot lever. Press the black button that you see here behind to release the footer. Take the presser foot that you want to use and place it on the needle plate here aligning with the bar. Now pull the presser foot lever down and it gets locked here. Now we have chained the presser foot. Now to remove this press on the black button here and remove the presser foot. Now let me show how to chain the needle. First turn the hand wheel towards you and raise the needle. Put the presser foot down. Before that make sure you place a fabric below so that when you remove the needle it does not fall into the hole on the needle plate. Put the presser foot down. Hold the needle with your left hand and use the oval screwdriver. Unscrew and turn it towards you. Slightly unscrew till the needle is released. Now to replace the needle, the flat side of the needle, the needle has one rounder side and flat side. The flat side of the needle should be towards the back of the machine. That is towards you, you should have the round side. Place it in and using the screwdriver tighten the screw. Now let's start with the sewing. First of all let's uh, select the pattern. Now I'll be showing straight stitches. So select two that is you have to turn the pattern dial so that the two is aligned with the marking here. This dial is to select the stitch length. Set the stitch length between 4 and 1. So let's start with 4 and let me show you how the stitch length will be at 4. Now coming to the stitch width, for straight stitch keep it at 2 or in between 2 and 3. Now let's start sewing. Always before starting to sew, it's better to sew on a scrap of fabric to check the thread tension is right. If you are getting loops or if the stitches are loose, you may need to chain the thread tension. So let's start sewing now. Switch on the machine, lift the presser foot, place the fabric below the presser foot, lower the presser foot. I've aligned the fabric to the edge of the presser foot here to get uniform stitch. Now start sewing by pressing the foot controller. You can control the speed by pressing it harder or lightly. Now as you sew, at the beginning and at the end you may want to lock your stitches. To lock the stitch, press the reverse sewing lever as you sew. As long as you are pressing the reverse sewing lever, it sews in reverse so that your stitches are locked and release the lever to stitch forward. And when you read the end, lock again. When you have done stitching, raise the footer, pull the thread and there is a blade on your left hand side. Cut the thread using the blade. Now I will sew again 
but I'll change the stitch length to 2 and I'll show you the difference once I'm done with this. This sewing was done with stitch length 4 and this with stitch length 2. For normal sewing you can use this stitch length. So you can set the stitch length between 2 and 3. Now let me show you one of the decorative stitches. Let's select 7. So turn the dial and select 7. Select the stitch length between 1 and 4 and let's start with the stitch width 4 and then I'll show you with the smaller number also. Turn the hand wheel towards you and lower the needle. Put the presser foot down. Start sewing. Now I'll chain the width and the length. Let me set the stitch length to 2. Let me set the stitch width to 3. So this was done using a bigger stitch length and broader stitch width and in this I had reduced the stitch length and width. So this is the difference when you reduce the stitch length or width. It is the same pattern but looks different when the stitch length and width is changed. This also has a feature called built-in free arm. Just slide it. This is useful while sewing satin sleeves or cuffs which I'll be showing in one of my upcoming videos. This also has a feature called one step buttonhole which I'll be showing in one of my upcoming videos. Practice the sewing lessons as shown in part 1. So these are the basic features of these two machines. Before buying the machine, you need to consider the space needed for the machine and also the usage, whether it's personal or professional. One of my upcoming videos, I'll also show the different footers available and how to use them. And also about the 5-thread overlock machine that I have. Hope this video helps you at least to some extent on deciding which machine to buy. Thanks for watching this video and happy sewing!